So good morning to all of you. Uh, uh, thank you, Rehab Next, for giving me an opportunity to speak about my work, uh, specifically related to physiotherapy and rehabilitation. So as my previous speaker, uh, I was very much uh, you know, uh, fascinated but w about what he said in his uh, uh, last talk, is like the speeding up uh, the rehabilitation program for any stroke patient so that he come to his job as early as possible. Affordability, uh, that's next point. So uh, at IIT Delhi uh, Neuromechanics Lab, we take care of all these aspects. And I believe that physiotherapy currently in India has to definitely meet with engineering in order to come up with a smart rehabilitation. So I would say that rehabilitation has to go really, really smart. Uh, otherwise, it would be really, really difficult to achieve all these goals, what my previous speakers has uh, you know, mentioned about. Uh, engineering, when I talk about engineering, uh, I remember my uh, first speaker for today, uh, today's uh, meeting was, uh, he mentioned about machine learning, artificial intelligence, right? So this is one of the area which can really gear up the, you know, uh, rehabilitation time for either the stroke patient or a, you know, amputee population or, or a spinal cord injured patient. So somehow the, in order to, you know, um, make sure that the things really go smarter, uh, engineering has to come into the picture. And that is why I will show you some of the work, at least at the glimpse level, because it's very difficult to cover all the things in detail uh, within 10 minutes. So at least I will cover up all the work that are going on in uh, a neuromechanics research lab at IIT Delhi, where I am the leading uh, faculty for this uh, group. And uh, fortunately, being faculty at AIMS also, I get privileged to, you know, uh, get the clinical input uh, within the possible and efficient way. So uh, there are a few areas I will discuss. Uh, one of them, we have recently come up with a technology which has been really, really efficient in rehabilitation uh, for, uh, you know, a stroke patient as well as uh, the amputee population. Uh, I'm not sure that how many of you actually use EMG as a signal for rehabilitation, but across the world, EMG has been the gold standard for monitoring the rehabilitation, treating the uh, amputee population, treating the stroke population, and many others. Somehow, the problem with EMG, even though it is a gold standard, uh, it has a problem of being you know corrupted by the noise which is created by sweating because it is you know it covers the physiological information inside the muscle which is basically the firing of the muscle fibers unfortunately it gets corrupt when it you know it is uh, being you know uh, corrupted by the sweating as well as it is very very sensitive for the anatomical location and other thing it has to be properly you know placed by a skilled person otherwise you know it's very difficult to get the repeatability of the signal all the time Somehow, we, we, we could find an other alternate which has been very, very uh, efficient in the last at least two years, and uh, I'll show you some of the device which has been working with that, is basically the force myography. So what happens whenever your muscle actually get contract, so just think of a sort of a uh, cylinder, and your muscles are inside lying as a fiber. Whenever they contract, they create a radial force in the you know, outward directions. So what happens, the precursor of, so this force in the outer surface can be easily captured by of the self force sensors. So just think that if I contract something in this direction, there will be a radial force in this direction. Like just assume a volume and this force creates in these directions. If I can capture those pressures, because it is a force getting in this direction, the pressure will be something on the surface. So you can feel a pressure when you create the biceps like this, right? So if I can use that information for rehabilitation, it will be really fantastic. Why? Because it is a physical, it is a mechanical information, force, it's mechanical information. But EMG is a physiological information. So it's very rare, it's very, uh, you know, l low probability that your force myography signal will be corrupted by the noise. So let me give you a brief idea of how does so you can see here, I can I, I place a sensor array on the surface of you know either the amputee or a stroke patient or any any you can take any case uh, based on your application. And what happens if you ask the person to even contract little bit, you get an outward force which you capture, because it is a force. It does not you know uh, affect by sweating 
because it's a mechanical input. And then based on many, uh, I mean, of course, the electronics. So basically, I'm an electronics engineer, so I, it's like, uh, for me, it's, uh, it will take a time for, you know, explain all the things. But just we use some basic electronic circuits to amplify that signal, which is coming from the muscles as a force. And then we use it for rehabilitation purpose uh, for many applications. So this, these are some of the results which I would really like to, you know, explain. But given the time, I would just show you that, you know, based on this sensor, we could, we could actually, you know, overcome the major limitation of the EMG signals. So EMG signals, although, as I said, are assumed as a, and why it has not been, you know, uh, taken care by the Western countries because the summers are at a very, you know, not that intense like in India or maybe any other country like Africa. Because the summers are really intense here, so we have to find, so sometimes we have to see what is really needed in the country. We cannot chase US for everything, right? We have a different setup, we have a different condition, we have to take the advantage of our localization, and then only we can really compete with US. If you really go ahead, you, you just blindly follow US, I mean, there are some things we have to take care uh, in terms of our country. So we thought, okay, so EMG may be really good for US because they are, most of the time they have the winters, but in India we have to find a solution where, you know, we have an extended summers of two, three months, or even sometimes four months. So this is one of the results that I want to show that we could actually, you know, classify that what is the intention of the patient, what does he want to do before actually he does that. So it is a very important precursor information for physiotherapist or the rehabilitation program that what he intend to do. If you really decode that intention, you can actually use the rehabilitation robotics, which is a very popular area. But until unless you really decode it correctly, the robotics or the rehabilitation robotics, they are of not so use. It is just a robotics. It becomes rehabilitation robotics when you really decode that information correctly. That's where the engineering comes into the picture. That is where the artificial intelligence or the machine learning comes into the picture, right? These are some of the, uh, you know, uh, we have, as I, I'll show you maybe the video directly that will help. Uh, okay, sorry, so just give me a second. So, we have an intelligent uh, along with, as I said, with AIMS uh, faculty. So, I'll just show you the performance of that rather than just showing the details. So, you can see this patient. So, we, we decode the intent of the patient because still there is the residual information of the patient and based on that, we drive the prosthetic. That's why it's an intelligent prosthetic lag. So, so I'll just skip because uh, that's a, uh, so the patients are really motivated. That's the best thing because they have to involve little bit of cognitive load uh, on the device. And then rehabilitation robotics. That's the other area where I was just, uh, you know, talking about. So, for example, a stroke patient, right? So, uh, when my first speaker, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, maybe second speaker, when he was talking about the stroke, in a stroke, it is very, very important. I mean, you might have heard of this term neural plasticity that has recently come into the picture. So, it has shown that if you can, if you do the proper rehabilitation, when I say proper, I, I mean to say that quantified rehabilitation, you can actually, you know, increase the effectiveness of the neural plasticity. Right? So this is one of the area which, you know, uh, which, which, which can enhance the output of this robot, uh, rehabilitation, rehabilitation robotics. So this is one of the area that we are trying. So what we are trying to do is based on the, you know, intent of the patient, can we intend that what was the knee angle that he wanted to produce? Because it's very important. It's not only the angle actually, sometimes it is the torque which is very important. So in order to create that torque for the given patient, it has to be customized. And how do you customize it? By doing some certain modeling, which is very important. So that's what we are doing here. And I will show you some of the application of the machine learning that, that we are currently using. So, yeah, so you can see this is a very interesting machine learning algorithm, which is very popular, although you might not have that background to understand it, but just an overview that it is sort of a, um, sort of a model which learns from the data of the patient, right? Although the only drawback which I believe, and honestly speaking, it's not a drawback, but you need to provide an enough amount of data to get it trained. But once it gets trained, it can, you know, recapture all the possible intention of the patient for a given, given uh, knee angle data. And once you know that the patient want to do really this, and you provide that torque by a machine, which I am calling robot, then you will feel that the rehabilitation really improves. And it is also very, very effective in terms of, you know, getting the patient into the real uh, normal life. That's the one thing. So we have done it so far for on few subjects. So maybe, uh, so you can see, 
uh, you can see this uh, particular graph which is very interesting. So one is basically the measured which is the true one and you can see the blue one. You can see they are completely overlapped. So blue one is provided by the robot, the rehabilitation robot. You can see the intention and the rehabilitation robot. They are pretty close in this graph. So this is one of the major success of this particular project. Other than that, as I will show you, that we also work on the, uh, uh, with the neurology department here, we are uh, working with the, uh, this uh, detection of uh, freezing in Parkinson patients. Generally what happens, the DBS is a very popular technology to rehabilitate this uh, Parkinson patient, deep brain stimulation. Unfortunately what happens in deep brain stimulation, they provide the deep brain stimulation at certain point of time and they see the treatment and they monitor the outcome when he is walking at a different point of time. So when I discussed with my colleague in neurology department here, we came up with a solution, okay, we should not actually give the stimulation all the time, right? It should be need given. Whenever you need, only you give the drug or whenever there is a need, you only give the stimulation. So now what we are doing, this shoe is a very intelligent shoe, which captures your walking profile, and whenever there is a freezing. So freezing happens like this. So whenever there is a freezing, it detects the freezing, and then gives an auditory cue. Auditory cue, or maybe the brain stimulation, to overcome that freezing. So now the point is, it is a need-based given treatment. It's not that you all the time give the treatment, and then you measure the outcome. Right. So rehabilitation has to really go smart in terms of engineering in order to you know, improve its effectiveness. So I'll show you that there are very interesting results uh, we have got from this device. But given the time limitation, I'm just skipping. And this is one of the very uh, interesting area where we are monitoring the you know, center of pressure when a person walks. Right. So based on the person, so what happens, the, new, uh, the feedback part is missing in many neurological disorders. So what we are trying to do based on his walking pattern, we are trying to give the feedback which the patient can actually feel and then reintegrate that feel or that artificial sensation in its control strategy of walking, which has been very, very important. Right? So these are some of the areas which I wanted to show you and I wanted to make you realize that yes, rehabilitation is really, really important, but until unless it go in parallel with engineering, it's very difficult to get the speedy recovery for any patient which really needs the rehabilitation. So I think it has been, uh, you know, the message is very clear. Uh, handshake with engineering, handshake of physiology, uh, sorry, handshake of physiotherapy with engineering can really give the smart rehabilitation. Thank you very much.